That was a Blazers game. That was that happened, and unlike the Pelicans game where it was just kind of a lack of effort, this one was so glaringly obvious that it just kind of it, it, it hurts the mind. Anyone can adequately understand that if something is actively hampering you, you usually find a way to remove it and find a new solution as opposed to what our coaching does. I kind of like, I lit it like, yeah. So Russ triple double, cool. Beal scored a bunch of points, cool. Rui even went off, great. But guess what? It didn't even matter because last time, I remember last, the last game, honestly, before I even continue, it's just kind of hilarious how like, we were all, as Wizards fans, just drunk off of the nirvana of the way that that comeback against the Nets went. And now it's just right back down in the trenches. Like, like it's just like, it's just like jumping for joy and then getting like absolutely kicked in the face. The reason we lost this game is not down to one player. It's not. But if you were to be like, okay, what player had the least amount of impact and actually negatively affected the team. Everyone, everyone is literally going to say Bertans. Davis was invisible last game, which was hilarious because I was like, huh, did Davis do anything last game? Because it didn't feel like he did. Felt like he just went in there, missed some threes, ran some cardio, and, and then sat down. And that's what happened. That's what happened this game. And what makes it so mind-numbing is that anyone could tell you the, the commentators were literally saying it over and over again why is Bertans still out here why are we running him he's getting cooked on defense now mind you this entire team is terrible at defense for some reason at random intervals we were deciding to like triple team mellow or we were trapping in his canter on uh, uh, like <laughs> We were trapping in his canter, and they would just kick it out, and it was a three. And it, you, you think about, like, how there's certain games against teams where they don't miss. Like, Utah and Denver had a game where Denver just went off, and it wasn't because Utah was inherently a bad defensive team. It was more because at that time, Denver was just really, really good, and they weren't missing. It doesn't make Utah a bad defensive team. What makes a bad defensive team is a team that it's so obvious that they're not doing the things on defense that need to be done because it feels it feels fake every time I see the Wizards start trying to like push up on defense because nothing ends up happening. We end up just leaving shooters open because for some reason everyone's doubling someone as if we have the defenders that can run and, and cover ground and make up for switches and counters and we don't have that so the blazers got whatever they want I've, I've said this before i said this about i think the hawks or something or a team the pelicans if you need to pick me up if you if you are a, a team that is on the ropes and you're like wondering about it just play against the wizards one time just play against us one time unless you're the nets the nets are cursed but just play against us one time and you can shoot you can do whatever you want because it'll work for you it'll work and it and like, okay, there is something to be said for some of these fouls with Denny Advia. Oh my God. And maybe it's the homer in me, but it feels like every time Denny's got his hands up, he's moving along the baseline. He's not slamming into, like when Robin Lopez fouls, right? It's obvious. When Russ fouls, it's obvious. When all these Denny fouls seem to be the guy is running and he's running with him with his hands up and the guy bounces off him and then it's a foul call. And what makes it worse is that, again, we have an absolute awful coach. I really try my best to be sort of understanding of all angles when it comes to this. But this game was just, it's, Bertans is missing all of his threes. And when he's not hitting his threes, that's it. That's it. We were paying this man, like, a lot of money to miss threes and catch some cardio and then that's it that's that's literally it that's all and it sucks because again it wasn't all Berton's fault at some point a good coach goes okay this player isn't playing well I need to put in a player that's playing well when we did go on a run for some reason for some inexplicable reason that I'm sure Brooks will come up with something in the post game scrum to say and 
every Wizards fan is just gonna try to keep their blood pressure from rising any higher. For some reason, he took he took he takes Denny out. He just randomly just takes Denny out, puts Bertans back in, and we go right back down. He did not take Bertans out of the game until it was out of hand. Even though we were making a run without Bertans, all he had to do was probably put Denny back in because Rui started going off and he shot 90%. Rui was shooting 90%. And every time it, it just turned into like the Blazers because they're a team that at least has like some some kind of some kind of sense. You know, they, they, have, a, they have a coach that at least offensively has some kind of sense. To be like, okay, there's a clear disadvantage that we can take advantage of. Let's just keep attacking it until, like, like, literally coaching is like kind of some type of chess. And when your opponent figures out a weakness, you need to find a way to hide that weakness. Sort of like Brad Stevens used to do when Isaiah Thomas was scorching nets. He found a way to hide Isaiah Thomas so that Isaiah Thomas could still do his thing without it hampering the rest of the team. But our coach decides to just leave the guy in who is clearly not doing the one thing we paid him to do and he's clearly a negative and we just continue to stubbornly run him and I, do, I don't understand there is not an answer to that when your team is finally making a run and doing the right things you need to keep those players in or put beneficial players in stuff like this is is why when Jim Boylan got fired people were like yeah so now Scott Brooks is the worst coach Ain't that sad? That that's sad. When like the only thing that was keeping you from being the worst coach was that some guy was just a little bit worse than you. You never want to be the second worst, because the minute the first worst gets rid of, it's just you. And I I, I hate I hate that it, it's turning into like just a Scott Brooks thing, because obviously, like I said, it's an entire team wide issue with the defense, but. The coaches are the people who make the plans and the players are the ones who have to execute them. I don't understand why we're trapping guys. We're trapping everybody or we're triple teaming everybody. And you have to just hope that the rest of the defense gonna make up for that. And like, like Robin Lopez, you took out, you take out Robin Lopez. Cause he's basically really, he's a, he's a lumbering big that should on a really good team probably gets garbage time. Let's be real. He really shouldn't be our starter. But the problem is we don't really have bigs like that anyway. But oh wait, I forgot we did have we do have Mo Wagner. Did we run him? No. Did we? Did we? Do do we run him? Mm -mm. No. Mo didn't play for like like he played some of this game. Came in, gave us energy. Was taking charges. Him and Garrison Matthews, but they don't get any minutes. And it's just baffling. It's absolutely baffling. And it makes no sense to not run the players who are making an impact on this game, who are doing the little things that you keep championing. Like, you'll, like I, I hate when Brooks will say things. I just hate when he says stuff because it's always so backwards. Like, they asked him what he's telling Beal during these losses and all he could say is, yeah, I just keep telling Beal to lead us. What does that do? This, what, is that, what does that do? At some point, Beal can't do everything. Granted, again, Westbrook, Beal, Rui, they were having amazing games, and they were all squandered. It is something to be said for, again, the entire team's lack of ability to play defense, but what schemes are they running? Because the current scheme is just let them get whatever they want. When, when literally the announcers and the fans can coalesce together and agree on something, especially when these when when fan there are not many fans of the announcers we currently have. You got a problem. When when everybody's like, yeah, Westbrook could probably coach better, or or we'll take Drew Gooden, we'll take him off of the announcer and let him coach. Because even Drew Gooden kept pointing out, why is Baton still in his game? And then what happened, what made it worse was Bertans hit that one three. He hit that one three when we went on another run, and I was like, oh, he's going to keep him in. He's going to keep him in. And then he did. Brooks, as a coach, is fundamentally detrimental to any success for this team. This team wins in spite of him, not because of him. And there is, there is no no amount of evidence to prove that Brooks has done anything beneficial for the Wizards as a coach. And it's just, it's just so bad. It's so bad. 
you take players out that are doing the right things, but then you sit there and you let someone play like absolute trash. Trash. Dolphins was building houses more than he was scoring. And we just we just, just kept letting it happen. So yeah, Wizards can't play defense. That's nothing new. But Wizards with but the but the head coach decides to just to just not even not even try to give this team a chance. He said, no, no, no. You guys will have to win with Bretons. Screw you. And then the thing that just ticks me off so much is that I know Brooks is going to act like he he had to, he just had no choice. He just he just doesn't know what's happening. He's going to act like an observer. And that really irritates me. I don't understand. Why would you act like an observer if you are literally the one in charge of doing things like like you were the one that can be like, okay, Bretons, you need to sit. You're not playing well, but I'm not gonna leave you in there to just keep getting roasted and keep getting targeted. Brooks is a really bad coach, and we have to somehow suffer through this for about another however many games is left on the schedule. Because I really, again, we have winnable games, and it's not all on the coach. It's not all on the players, or at least it's not all on one player. But at some point when one of your players is getting targeted and you can easily just sub them out and you choose not to and you actively hinder your team's chances of winning, there is something to be said for your level of understanding of any kind of in-game rhythm. Because Brooks has no understanding of in-game momentum at all, clearly. As long as he is coaching us, I feel like it's just going to be a consistent winning in spite of him. Like he's going to do something stupid, dumb, unhelpful, and the team will just have to win somehow. And because our defense is so bad, like, again, we need to get rid of that entire coaching staff because apparently Michael Lombardi, however you say his name, is it him? Apparently he's the one in charge of our defense. Just cut them all. Just cut them all. I don't care. Just cut them all. Like, it's just so it's so bad. It's <laughs> so bad. And you can't even dole up players. Like, you can't do And that's what we signed him for. We signed him for that. And then we also supposedly, and supposedly we signed him so that KD would even look at us and KD didn't even glance at us. So you signed a coach for that. And you had the opportunity to get rid of this coach. So now we so yeah. It isn't if this season goes to pot, I think Brooks is the first one to ask to get any kind of blame before you even look at a single player. You have to blame him, and then you have to look at the GM who decided to keep him, Tommy Shepard. What are you doing? And then on top of that, just baffling moves all around. Now, I might just be annoyed, but I feel like you need to get rid of both of them at this point. Just just get someone who is not connected to Ernie Grunfeld. Get someone who is not connected to KD. Get a GM that is can just be decent or just better than this. Get a, get a coach that can be a tactician but can develop. And I know that's difficult, but just find anything that is not Scott Brooks that can understand basic things when it comes to to momentum in games end statement yeah yeah it's just, like i said i don't i don't, I don't I, there's nothing else to really say but that's pretty much why we lost other than you know the blazers hitting like a billion threes we just let them get whatever they wanted and yeah i i'm just on to the next game just on to the next game i don't even want to i don't even want to think about this game anymore i just i just don't and it just sucks because I have to wake up tomorrow and Brooks will be our coach. And he's going to do something like this again. And he's going to take out a player that's playing well. But he's keeping a player that's playing like trash when he's a veteran. It doesn't matter if your rookie is playing well and he sometimes gets really BS foul calls. You'll still play him. You'll still play him. And then we'll have to suffer. The oh, God. Okay. So we play the Heat tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um... And the Heat recently just lost to Charlotte, I think. I think they just lost to Charlotte. So they're already going to be itching for a win because they're struggling. And again, if you're struggling, just play against us. Just play against us. And we'll give you whatever you want. So if we somehow pull out a victory against the Heat, cool. If we don't, I'm not going to be shocked. I want us to win games. It'd be great. We had Westbrook and Beal clicking, but... And even Rui, despite his struggles, it was really cool to see Rui winning. Yeah, I've, 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 I've blabbed enough about the same thing over and over. Now I'm just talking in a circle because I'm so just frustrated. <sighs> yeah. Well, this guy says, 
Wizards don't really... I don't think Wizards are good chefs, you know? I think when the heat comes in the kitchen, the Wizards gotta get out, because they don't have a spell for that. There's no spell for burnt food, I think. You just need to know what you're doing in the kitchen. We'll find out the Wizards actually do know how to cook soon enough. See you next game. Let's watch.